Now we are going to discuss very important tumor that is just gastrointestinal stromal tumor. So this is just gastrointestinal stromal tumor. First tell me what is the most common site of gist? So you know that the most common site is stomach. So most common site of gist it is stomach followed by small intestine. So it is stomach followed by small intestine followed by colon rectum followed by esophagus. So colon rectum followed by esophagus. Esophagus. Clear? Now what to remember in gist? Only thing which you have to remember here it is stromal. What kind of tumor is this? This is stromal tumor. It means this is stromal or mesenchymal tumor. So one simple question tell me gist will behave like carcinoma or sarcoma. You know carcinomas are having epithelial origin. Sarcomas are having stromal or mesenchymal origin. So gist obviously it is having stromal origin. So it behaves like sarcoma. So what is the property of sarcoma? Sarcomas are having what kind of spread? Exclusively hematogenous spread. So in gist also you will find exclusively hematogenous spread. There is no lymphatic spread and if there is no lymphatic spread there is no need of lymph node dissection. Second, for sarcomas what is the treatment? We go for wide local excision and how much margin is sufficient? 2 cm. So here also we go for wedge shaped excision or wide local excision and how much margin is sufficient here 2 cm clear so you will not forget this is stromal tumor it means gist will behave like sarcoma another question it arises from gastric pacemaker cell and what's the name of gastric pacemaker cell it is also known as interstitial cells of kahal so it arises from gastric pacemaker cell the name is interstitial cells of kahal this is interstitial cells of kahal Clear? You know in the patients of gist there is expression of tyrosine kinase receptor and what is the name of this tyrosine kinase receptor seek it. So there is expression of in gist there is expression of this tyrosine kinase receptor clear tyrosine kinase receptor and what is the name of this tyrosine kinase receptor this is seek it seek it there is a marker for this C kit which is asked frequently. Tell me what is the name of the marker. So for C kit you know the marker is CD117. So for C kit the marker is CD117. Apart from CD117 there are other markers also for this. Other markers are BCL2, CD34 and PDGFR alpha. What is the full form? This is platelet derived growth factor receptor alpha. So platelet derived growth factor receptor alpha. There is one question which is asked frequently. What are the new markers relatively new markers for gist? So there are relatively new markers for gist. First is dog 1. What is the full form of dog 1? This is detected on gist 1 and the second is protein kinase C theta. So what are the new markers? It's asked frequently. First is dog 1 dog 1 that is detected on just 1 and the second is protein kinase C theta. Second marker that is protein kinase C theta. So this is protein kinase C theta. Clear? Now coming to the types. What are the types of gist? It is of two varieties spindle cell and epithelioid. Which one is most common spindle cell variety? So if you see the types, types of gist, it is of two types. Types. First is spindle cell variety spindle cell clear spindle cell variety this is responsible for 70 percent cases so overall it is most common type overall this is most common spindle cell and epithelioid this is responsible for 30 percent cases so epithelioid epithelioid clear this epithelioid variety it is responsible for 30 percent cases now coming to the symptoms clinical features have a look it's very easy to differentiate between the symptoms of carcinoma stomach and gist in carcinoma stomach, we discussed that what is the most common site. The most common site was antrum and what kind of growth? There was intraluminal growth, clear? And because of this intraluminal growth, what was the symptom? The most common symptom was abdominal pain followed by weight loss, clear? Why? Because there was intraluminal growth. If you see gist, in gist this kind of growth is seen. Can you see? What kind of growth? This is extraluminal growth. So growth is outside the lumen. Whenever there is extra luminal growth, you are going to notice that most of the patients are asymptomatic in initial stages because the growth is outside the lumen. Only problem that this tumor is hypervascular and when the tumor is hypervascular, sometimes it is going to bleed. So whenever tumor is going to bleed in the lumen, 
what is the most common presentation the most common presentation is actually emergency presentation where patient comes with bleeding and abdominal pain so what happens in majority of cases in initial stages patient is asymptomatic why because what kind of growth is there yes it is extra luminal growth clear so see the clinical features in gist most common symptom so most common symptom in patients of gist it is bleeding and abdominal pain if you have to choose one choose bleeding so it is bleeding and abdominal pain this is bleeding why bleeding because tumor is hypervascular so sometimes it is going to bleed in the lumen so it is bleeding and abdominal pain this is the most common presentation bleeding and abdominal pain majority of patients are symptomatic at advanced stage clear we discussed that what is the most common route of spread in patients of gist the most common route of spread it is hematogenous clear so most common route of spread just like sarcoma it is hematogenous which spread is not seen lymphatic spread so just like sarcomas there is no lymphatic spread so there is no lymph node metastasis since malignancy is located in git and the hematogenous spread is there so tell me what is the most common site of metastasis obviously liver so in these cases also gist in gist also what is the most common site of metastasis that is liver this is liver and one thing which you have to remember that lymphatic spread is not seen in gist so important point what here lymphatic spread is not seen in gist lymphatic spread is not seen clear so lymphatic spread is not seen right coming to the diagnosis we discussed that in patients of carcinoma stomach what is the investigation of choice so we go inside and we go for endoscopy and we take the biopsy from the tumor why because growth is intraluminal what is the problem in patients of gist the growth is extraluminal if growth is extraluminal even if you are going to perform endoscopy what you are not able to visualize the tumor sometimes you are going to notice only area of hypervascularity so there might be only evidence of hypervascularity and if you are trying to take biopsy what happens since tumor is hypervascular it ruptures so this question is asked frequently that what is contraindicated in patients of just endoscopic biopsy so endoscopic biopsy is contraindicated so what is the investigation of choice obviously cct you know any situation any condition which is extra luminal so extra luminal conditions of git are mainly diagnosed by cct like gist mesenteric cyst intra abdominal collection intra abdominal abscess clear so these are diagnosed by cct so here how we make the diagnosis so you know that investigation of choice for diagnosis here investigation of choice for diagnosis this is easy question it is cct it is cct and endoscopic biopsy is contraindicated otherwise it can cause tumor rupture so endoscopic biopsy endoscopic important point we can perform endoscopy but endoscopic biopsy it is contraindicated why because it can cause tumor rupture tumor is hypervascular here treatment is easy to understand this patient is having this kind of growth so what kind of growth is there there is extra luminal growth and it is sarcoma so what kind of surgery is done in sarcomas in sarcomas we go for white local excision or wedge shaped excision so this kind of excision is done we go for if tumor is resectable so for resectable tumors we go for wedge shaped excision or wide local excision and how much margin we take 2 cm so the margin is 2 cm so exactly we perform segmental resection in the patients of gist we perform segmental resection clear or wedge shaped excision so this is segmental resection or wedge shaped excision wedge shaped excision clear and how much margin this you have to remember segmental resection or wedge shaped excision and we are going to take how much margin 2 cm so with 2 cm margin with 2 cm margin no need to perform lymphadenectomy why because there is no lymphatic spread second situation imagine patient is having unresectable gist in these cases we have to downstage the tumor and for downstaging the tumor you know what is the drug of choice or what is the first line agent it is imatinib suppose patient is having imatinib resistant gist so what is the second line agent that is sunitinib and what is the third line agent there is a new drug regorafenib so the patients who are having unresectable gist drug of choice or first line agent this is imatinib mesylate so this is imatinib 
We discussed what are the other uses of imatinib. It is also used in CML. It's a drug of choice and it is first line agent in DFSP, dermatofibrosarcoma protuberance. Second line agent, this is sunitinib. So sometimes this question is asked indirectly that what is the drug of choice for imatinib resistant gist sunitinib and the third line agent it's a new drug which one regorafenib. So the third line agent that is regorafenib it is regorafenib clear. Suppose you started imatinib how will you assess the response of therapy whether the tumor is responding or not. So to assess the response of therapy we are going for PET scan and this is the unique indication of PET scan. So what happens we should be having a baseline PET scan and after starting imatinib you have to assess the size of tumor whether the size of tumor is decreasing or not. Suppose size of tumor is not decreasing but if there is evidence of necrosis within the tumor it is evidence that tumor is responding. So this is latest question what investigation of choice to assess the response of therapy in just investigation of choice to assess response to assess response of therapy to assess response of which drug response of imatinib and this is totally unique indication of pet scan here we go for pet scan so monitoring the response of therapy it is done with pet scan clear